So if that's the one thing I want to leave people with, it's to think about life that way. What can waking up and being thinking to yourself, not what can I complain about today, rather what can I be grateful for today? This is Joya Santorelli and you are listening to Line for Line podcast. And just like that, we're back at another very special episode of Line for Line podcast. I am your host, Devon Booker. We're in the building with a young lady who's very talented when it comes to yoga. Very special young lady. Before we let her introduce herself to the world, we'll go ahead and say, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave an interactive comment for me and my guests. And like that, we'll let her introduce herself to the world. Hi, everyone. My name is Joya Santorelli. All right, young lady. And just go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself, the most cliche thing to start the episode. Well, first of all, I love the fact that you're calling me young lady because I am actually going to be 45 years old next week. No way. So I appreciate the compliment. I'll take it. (laughs) So that just means I have to start doing yoga so I don't look old in the face anymore because you look really young, seriously. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So go ahead and break down to the people. Just tell them a little bit about you, what the inquiring minds may want to know. Oh, well, let's see. I'm born and raised in Kenosha. Okay. And... um, I've spent a lot of time here, uh, went off to school at Marquette University for my undergrad. Did you go with Dwayne Wade? Sorry to cut you off. No, um, no, he's younger than I am. Okay. Quite quite a bit younger than I am. Okay. Um, But went to Marquette for my undergrad. And uh, after that, I really had no idea what I was going to do with my life. I had a, a degree in broadcasting, but I knew that wasn't for me. And then um, I ended up uh, competing for and winning the Miss Wisconsin pageant. Stop playing. So, yeah, so that's what I did for the whole year. Um, Traveled around not only the state of Wisconsin, but the actual, the the entire country, Mm -hmm. talking about breast cancer, which was my platform at the time. And that was my job for a year, competed at Miss America as well. And that was an exciting experience. After that was done, I had a whole new found respect for um, the law, to be honest with you. And so I decided I'll go to law school and then ended up doing that. Um, My husband and I, who is also Kenosha native, uh, Greg Santorelli, we moved back to the area. We lived out east for about four years, moved back here, and we've been here ever since. Um, So I stopped practicing law and I'm living my best life as a yoga instructor now. (laughs) Living her best life. So what I took from that, you said you have a broadcasting degree. Yes. So just tell us a little bit about that because I can kind of say I'm kind of in that lane of broadcasting. So just tell me a little bit about that, how you got into that. Well, it was just fascinating to me. And when I went to college, I had no idea, honestly, what I wanted to do. I knew what I didn't want to do. Um, And I've always been interested in just communication. That's just, I'm definitely an extrovert. And I thought it would be something that I would be interested in and be good at possibly. But as I got through the schooling and did a bunch of internships, I just realized that it wasn't for me. So no. So do you still dabble with it nowadays in your current position? No, not technically, but I really feel as though all of the experience I have in broadcasting and through being Miss Wisconsin and even being a litigator when I was practicing law have really been all the tools that have helped me become a successful yoga instructor. So Mm -hmm. it's funny when you look back on things, how it all kind of lines up and all of these kind of talents that you develop over the years kind of meld and um, they help you out with with your current position. So that's where I'm at now. So Miss Wisconsin, just tell us a little bit about that whirlwind and what it was like to be at the peak of your celebrity Miss. Oh, well, <laughs> my 15 minutes of fame, <laughs> if that. Um, no, really, it was a it was an awesome experience. I had the opportunity to represent Kenosha as Miss Kenosha for a year. And um, that to me was, you know, just one of the highlights of my life. I really, I really loved that. Mm-hmm. And then never thinking I would end up winning Miss Wisconsin. That was an incredible honor. And 
something that has changed me for the good for forever. Mm -hmm. Um, I really had no choice but to mature quite a bit at that time. And I really was able to develop my public speaking skills, um, being able to interact with people from all walks of life, from young kids to elderly people. And my platform of breast cancer, this was back in 2000. So this was a long time ago when, you know, now people talk about breast cancer all the time. But back then, it was somewhat of a taboo subject. Yes, ma'am. So I really um, enjoyed the kind of the work that I did, the advocacy that I did working with the American Cancer Society and the National Breast Cancer Coalition. Um, I really is a lot to my heart. It's um, something I'm very proud of that work. Yes, ma'am. Yes. I actually have a couple of aunts who were able to beat breast cancer. So when you talk about the 2000 era, era, that's actually when I was like in it more so because that's when my aunt was going through her chemo and everything like that as well, too. So I was like right in the midst of it right then and there. A lot of people know that I work in the medical field as well, too. My mom and her sisters were part of the reason that I got started into the medical field so I can be able to help people and bring information home to better help my mom cope with the things that she was going through as well, too. So when you say that, that just speaks volumes to me. And then you mentioned you being in topics with people of all walks of life, being able to talk to people from the younger people to the older people. I was like, that resonated with me because that's what I do with my platform as well, too. And I'm just like, look at her spewing all of this information that like resonates with me. Who just would have thought seriously? Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's funny how all these, when you're going through it, you never know how all these life experiences are going to play out and how it's going to help you later on in life. I mean, believe me, I never thought I would be a yoga instructor. Really? No, never. So Not in a million years. So the law school, that was after the Miss America, correct? Yes. How, how did that go? How would you get into that as well, too? Um, well, I was always interested in the law, and I love being a student. So when I was done being Miss Wisconsin, I just, to be real honest, I'm like, I don't really know what to do. Um, and I saw the movie Legally Blonde, and I thought, well, if Elle Woods can go to law school... <laughs> I can go to law school. Oh, okay. Well, so I went. What would you say you get the most? Do you get, oh, that's Joya, Miss America, the law student, or the yoga owner? Well, I have to preface it. I didn't win Miss America. Oh, you did not? No. Okay, okay. I, I won Miss Wisconsin, but I did not win Miss America. So I don't want to, um, you know, get, get any misconceptions up. here. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, to be honest, I, I don't know how, how people view me Really? in all honesty. Now I'm wearing my yoga hat these oh days. So that's where I'm at these days. I'm, I'm the yogi. Yes, ma'am. So just tell us a little bit, a little bit about the transition into yoga. Good question. Um, I practiced law for about three or four years. And during that time, I, became a mom. I have two boys. They're teenagers now. But at the time, this was like about 10, 12 years ago, they were young. And um, what happened was I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. So that happened. And then I stopped practicing law and just kind of focused on my health and being a mom. And um, I asked my neurologist, I'm just like, when you think of MS, my mind automatically went to like picturing myself in a wheelchair not being able to walk my kids down the aisle at their wedding. I, I mean, I was in my low 30s. I was frightened to death. Like, I didn't know what to expect. Did you have a lot of information on multiple sclerosis before being diagnosed? No, not before being diagnosed. Once I was diagnosed, I dove into it, read as much as I can, which can be good and bad. bad at the same time, because we do have those Google doctors out there. We do, I know. Or, um, yeah, a lot of people diagnose themselves off of Google and what Google says as well, too. So. Absolutely. Um, so the more I learned about the disease, I I had asked my neurologist, I'm like, just tell me what, what should I do to beat this or to live the best life I can, I can live. I'm young. I've got two little kids. What can I do? And he looked at me and instead of saying, go to this hospital or take that drug or eat this food, he said, start practicing yoga. And I was like, yoga. Mm -hmm. And and he said, "I, I swear by it, start practicing yoga. So the next day, literally, I joined my first yoga class. Prior to that, I had never done it before, and I never looked back. So that's how I got into yoga. Okay. So you started yoga the first day. What was your thought process after completing your first day? 
I enjoyed it. I had always danced as a, as a young girl and a teenager. I was always into dance. Mm -hmm. And, um, to me, yoga is a lot like dancing. So I loved it. I loved it. I, there was so much to learn. The beautiful part about yoga is you're never going to get it all. You're never going to learn it all. So you've, you're always striving to learn more and, um, to push yourself and to challenge yourself. There's just the sky's the limit with what you can do with yoga. Yes, ma'am. I think you just brought up a great point by saying that. So that brings me to my first question. How is it that you can, how is it that you can find with someone who's maybe nervous or scared to go? Cause I know I've got the invite to go to yoga, but I'm like, I don't want to look embarrassing. I, I don't think I'm that flexible. Like, how is it that you would like walk someone through like, no, it's okay. What was that like? That's a great question. Um, and that's probably the number one thing when I invite people to come to a class is they all say, well, I'm not flexible. Well, why would you, for example, let's say you go take tennis lessons. Do you take tennis lessons because you already know how to play tennis or do you take them so that you can learn how to play better? That's why you join a yoga class. Um, you may not be flexible to begin with, mm -hmm. but you will end up being flexible the more and more you do it. So my whole thing with my philosophy, with my studio and with my teaching, we're, our big thing is come as you are. Come as you are. Nobody expects any perfection from anyone. Everyone's able to do their own thing in the classes. You take your breaks when you need. You take your water when you need it. And you just be you. Mm -hmm. And we're very, very big on that at Santosha. So I just let people know you got to step out of your comfort zone. Rip off that Band-Aid. What do you have to lose? Absolutely nothing. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So this tells us a little bit about what it was like starting Santosha. Well, that's a great question, too. So I started it. Um, I've only been a yoga teacher for uh, about two years now. So it hasn't been that long. And I started it in my backyard in the middle of the pandemic. So the middle of the summer of 2020, literally in my backyard on the grass, I would get out a little speaker and I just started texting people and posting on social media that I was now a yoga instructor and that um, I was open for business and people started coming. And then they started coming and then even more started coming. So it got to the point where there would be times where honestly, some classes would have 75 to hundred people in them in your backyard, In my backyard. It's crazy. But I will be honest with you for some businesses starting in the middle of a pandemic wouldn't be the wisest thing, but for a outdoor yoga situation, it was the perfect storm. Mm -hmm. And you will remember at that time in Kenosha, in addition to the pandemic, we had the, the rioting. Yes. Yep. And people were looking for something, for anything. That safe haven. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So it was a perfect storm, honestly. I never imagined it would blow up the way it has, um, but it really has happened very organically. Nothing has been pushed or pulled in a way that um, doesn't belong, if that makes any kind of sense. It's yes, all just really transpired somehow. I think we all face that as business owners. You know, you want it to just, like, jump right off the bat you know you want to start it you want it to succeed right away but you don't realize how much goes into it you know because you'll get to the situation where you'll get bigger than you have capacity for and then you're like oh my gosh now i don't know how to do this i don't know what's next what's the next step because i'm speaking from personal experience myself i was like well i want to be big i want to be this but i have to realize what it takes to be there you know let's say i got a thousand subscribers first day but then my audio is still off or my camera is still off then it's like all right you got there but then you lost it right away too because you weren't prepared and i learned that proper preparation prevents poor performance so something that i have to learn as well too as an owner that's so true and plus like the journey too and you just told me you started at your kitchen table yes ma'am so it's it's a beautiful thing to see something and all this hard work just keep growing and growing and growing. And that's why people like you and they root for you because they see how hard you've worked to yes, get to the point where you're at. Yes, ma'am. And I love it. It's it's awesome. Yes, ma'am. It's good stuff. How is it that you find new ways to stay involved in the community and keep the community engaged with what you have going on over at Santosha as well? Wonderful question. Um, we have done, like, for example, one of my students went to uh, KUSD this week teaching kids about yoga and mindfulness. Um, I saw that. Was it Genevieve? Genevieve. Genevieve. That. Yes. yes. Yep. Another one of my instructors and myself, we went to um, an organization with Charmaine Harris mm -hmm. in town. Um, 
I can't remember what the organization's name is, but it was at the Kenosha Urban League, and it was for young fathers. Oh, and nice. so we did a yoga session with them as well. Um, to be honest with you, I really would love to get more um, diversity at Santosha um, coming to do yoga. There's That's the one thing that – it bugs me that there's not a lot of diversity for whatever reason there isn't. So, um, the more I can do to kind of reach out to diverse people, I would, I would love to. So mm-hmm. any ideas you have, I'm, I'm all ears for it. Yes, ma'am. I think I can think of a couple and get those to you. As well yes, too. because it's so important and it's so helpful to anyone. Um, my next goal, honestly, that I want to do as an instructor and as a, a yogi is I would love to start to go into Um, prisons to teach yoga because there is so much research and so many people doing this throughout the country of how great it can be for um, those that are are incarcerated to start to get into a yoga practice, a regular yoga practice. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So just tell us a little about what to expect upon our our first arrival to Santosha, what it will be like, what the leadership will be like as well too for someone's first day. Your first day, you show up with a yoga mat and some water and comfortable clothes. You will definitely be greeted. You will be, it's not a huge place. So there's a bathroom and there's a studio and a little cubby area to put your things. Most of our classes are heated and um, that's a cool component of it. And you'll just come in and everyone will be kind and greet you. And it's just a really warm, welcoming environment. Yes, it really, really is. So I noticed you said things are get a little heated and the classes are heated. So just tell us a little bit about that because I see that this hot yoga is sweeping the nation. I know that you guys offer that as well, too. Just tell us a little bit about what that entails. Well, our heat is um, it's called infrared heat. So it's not just like we're turning the furnace up to 100 degrees and, um, you know, letting everybody sweat it out. We have actual panels in the ceiling. Um, I think there's like 24 of them that um, emit the infrared heat. So I'm sure you've heard of infrared saunas, which are all the rage now. And the reason we did the infrared heat is because me having MS, which is an autoimmune disease, um, that type of heat has been shown to help people with autoimmune diseases, rheumatoid arthritis, um, all sorts of joint and muscle issues. And it's just like you're laying... The way I can describe it is like you're laying on the grass on a warm summer day and just feeling the warm sun on your face. That's how it feels. Yes, ma'am. It's it's awesome. Of course, of course. Now to those people out there, just tell us a little bit about why. Why choose Santosha Yoga? What separates Santosha Yoga from the other yoga places out there? Well, to be honest, it's I don't view it as a competition. Mm-hmm. I, I really want everyone to succeed. And I think Kenosha is large enough where it's it's great to have as many yoga studios as possible so that people have an option. Yes, so it's not so much as why choose Santosha over anyone else. It's just if you're going to come to Santosha, I, I want you to know that we are very welcoming to everybody and anybody. Um, we take it, ve- all of our instructors take it very, very seriously, our job. It's a, it's a big role to lead people in a yoga practice. And we just want people to have the best experience that they can have and to walk out of that space feeling really great about what they just did. Because it takes a lot of courage to come out of your comfort zone and to get into a space like that and to move your body and work your mind in the way that you do. And we don't take that lightly. Yes, of course, of course. Now, where is it that we can find Santosha Yoga, like via social media, Google, whatever the case may be? Yes, yeah. We're on Facebook and Instagram. Um, I don't know our exact handles, but I should, but I don't. (laughs) Just Santosha Yoga. And we're located in Pleasant Prairie, right by the roundabout by Gordy's Pub and by the Chase Bank. We will be doing some outdoor classes as well this summer um, because that's where we started is the outdoor classes. So we'll definitely be doing more of that. We do a lot of events throughout the community. We collaborate with um, a number of local businesses. We're going to be doing a rooftop sunset yoga at the Apis. Whoa. Um, Tavern on 6th, we do yoga and mimosas all the time. I saw that. I saw that. Or Bloody Marys, too. Yes. We oh, yeah. No, Bloody Marys as well, too. We like to keep it fun and loose. We don't take it too seriously. Most of, uh, well, I wouldn't say most, but a lot of our classes are themed classes. So music's a big part of our studio and about our culture. So, like, tomorrow I have a Van Morrison-based class. We've done a Namaste Drake class where it's all Drake songs, mm-hmm. um, Spice Girls, 
Justin Bieber. I mean, you name it, we've done it. And we just try to make it fun and loose and everybody have a great time. That's because life is short. So Of course, of course. So as we get ready to close out this amazing episode, what will be that one piece of advice that you will want people to remember coming from the young lady herself? Advice. Hmm. You're going to stop me here. <laughs> I guess um, what I'm going to say is, San okay, so Santosha means, it's a lot of people think that it means a hybrid of my last name, which is Santorelli and Kenosha, mm -hmm. Santosha. No, it doesn't. I didn't even think of that. Well, yeah, that's not even it. Santosha is, it's one of the yogic philosophies. And what it means is contentment. And I guess what advice or what piece of mind I want people to leave this interview with is, you should always go through your life being content. And that doesn't mean complacent, just twiddling your thumbs and, oh, I guess I'm here. No, content. Not always looking at what, who does, what does this person have that's better than me or is the grass greener on the other side. Truly waking up and thinking to yourself, what can I be grateful for today? And that's what the way I'm trying to live my life and lead my life, and I'm getting better and better at it mm -hmm. and being more mindful at it the more I dive deeper into my yogic practice. So if that's the one thing I want to leave people with, it's to think about life that way. What can Waking up and being thinking to yourself, not what can I complain about today, rather what can I be grateful for today? Yes, ma'am. Is there anyone that you would like to shout out, say hello to, maybe it helped you along the way, anything like that? Oh, well, I just want to thank you for having me on your show. I'm a big fan and I love what you're doing. I and I, I love to see this like self-made man. I think it's fantastic. I agree. All good that. stuff. And I mean, shout out to my kids, Rocky and Tino. And um, just thank you to everyone for all your support. And thank you for having me on. And with that being said, we just wrapped up an amazing episode of Line for Line. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. You calling or you listening, tune in every week. Line for line. Oh yeah, I'm going line for line.